This week on The Forge, we're going to look at why 2015 could be the biggest year of taxation since Federation. G'day Mark, welcome back to The Forge this week. Well, good to see you. So, uh, you want to tell our listeners uh, what you do and what your organisation, uh, where you're from? Uh, I'm the Head of Taxation with uh, Taxpayers Australia, mm -hmm. um, so basically uh, we're out there advocating for taxpayers and also representing taxpayers and providing education to them and also to tax professionals. And, and you tell me that 2015 is going to be the most exciting year for taxation, or well, why might that be? Uh, look, the government has been talking for a while now about reform to the tax system. They've promised, they've told us quite comprehensively that there's going to be a white paper coming, mm -hmm. uh, either very late in 2015 or very early in 2016. Mm -hmm. The proposals in that white paper will form the basis of the tax proposals that the current government will take to the election in 2016. And essentially 2015 is going to be a year when there are going to be lots of tax ideas out there, lots of people throwing in their opinions as to what's going to happen to the tax system. Um, lots of unpopular ideas are no doubt on the surface and some of those might make it into the white paper, some of them might not. There are real issues I think with the tax system which need to be grappled with. Um, we've already seen that the, the hole in the budget which the Treasurer tried to close in the preceding budget mm. it really hasn't been closed, a lot of those mm. budget measures haven't gone through. The government expended a lot of political capital uh, trying to get those budget measures, mm. measures through mm. and now they're going to expend a hell of a lot more trying to sell some of these very controversial tax proposals around GST reform, superannuation reform, uh, income tax, corporate tax reform. It's going to be a difficult year for them politically and it could lead to some very unpopular outcomes I guess with certain uh, types of taxpayers. So, so what would be the biggest reforms in your mind? Like you know, what are the really big things that we could look forward to just even as ideas? Oh, look, I, I think the one that seems to be seems to have the most traction at the moment is looking at the GST. Uh, the government has already flagged in not so subtle ways during the course of this year that mm. they want to look at that. They want to look at the way revenue is shared between uh, the, the federal government and state governments, uh, and they've they've kind of hinted quite strongly that GST is going to be part of that. And I think that the the sort of ideological uh, uh, bias of the current government mm. I, I, is aligned with the idea that GST needs to be looked at, that maybe the scope needs to be broadened, maybe the rate needs to be increased. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that will be dif difficult to sell politically, but I think that's going to be one of the key issues which is up for discussion. There are other issues around looking at capital gains tax, looking at the availability of negative gearing. That's also been thrown into the mix by lots of people. Probably doesn't align quite so closely with the government's ideological viewpoint, but nevertheless I don't think they can ignore that. Mm. And set against all this, of course, we've got all the issues around corporate taxes. Um, this year has been really big in terms of lots of stories around corporates not paying their way. Um, Internationally, indeed, as well. It's, it's not just an Australian no, no, issue. No, that's right. This is a, a, a very much a multinational issue. But here in Australia, we've had lots of stories about you know, the Googles and the Apples and so on who've not been paying their way. They've been using these very convoluted structures overseas. And some domestic uh, corporates as well also apparently uh, not paying their way. We've got the business lobby very much lobbying for the rate of corporate tax to be reduced. Mm. At the same time, they're also very firmly flying the flag for GST reform. So they're mm. looking to shift that tax burden from businesses onto consumers. Mm. Not a uh, for a government, not a necessarily a politically uh, astute way to go, but there's not. a lot of pressure along those lines. So there are these conflicting uh, sort of pressures at the moment. You've got the business lobby saying we need to cut the rates of corporate tax, we need to shift that burden onto the GST. And you've got the rest of the population saying, well, hang on, these guys aren't paying their way in the corporate taxes now. So maybe we need to be taxing them more and taxing them more effectively rather than whacking consumers with more in, in the way of GST. And on the consumer point here too, it seems like the government is uh, very quietly committed to bracket creep as a way of increasing taxation. Uh, certainly during the Howard years, the brackets jumped up enormously, but um, I, I can't see political either Liberal or Labor, uh, yeah. I can't see any way out really in terms of... Look, I, I mean that is the, 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 the perfect way to increase taxes. Without, Silently. Without anybody really noticing. Yes, the, nin the, the ninja tax that's, increase. That's, that's right, you just keep those brackets exactly as they are and you just allow economic growth, wage increases to gradually move more and more people into the higher uh, tax brackets. Um, and you can say you're not lifting the rates of income tax. Oh no. And, and you know, you can, you can get away with that and you're being, you know, 
you're technically correct. But more and more people are paying taxes at the higher rates and therefore the revenue is coming in. So I, I suspect that that will just continue whoever forms the next government. I, I don't see mm. there's any changes there. I mean, I think there's a lot of... Um, it, it, really those brackets should be indexed they should change every year in mm. line with the, the, the rates of inflation mm. that's what should happen mm. there's no way on earth that is going to happen no. because this is the ultimate as I say the ultimate silent tax increase every year the, the average Joe would be looking at this going like well business taxes are likely to decrease because of international pressure uh, GST is likely to increase and, and my own personal tax rate is likely to increase through bracket creep it's not looking very good for cons Australian consumers is it now? Uh, look, it's not. Um, and to be honest, to, to an extent, we, we've had it good for quite a long time. If you look mm. at the GST or the, the, the equivalents overseas, the value-added taxes that you see overseas, you know, you're typically, typically looking at rates in the European countries, for instance, of between about 17 and 22%. Mm. Uh, even in New Zealand, they're now up to, what, 15%. Mm. Here, we're still on that 10% rate, which we've been on ever since the GST was introduced. Because it's a right, it's it's nice round number. It's a nice round number, and it's not, uh, it, you know, it's it, it's not an excessively large number to, mm. to, to 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 align ourselves with a lot of the international rates. We we'll basically have to double GST. I don't mm. think anybody has the the courage to go down uh, quite that far. Mm. Um, but I think there is now some political momentum towards shifting that rate upwards, mm -hmm. and I suspect that once it starts to shift upwards once we might then see a, a sort of ratcheting up over time. Yeah, 1% also, per annum yeah, or something that, like that. That's right, and a lot of those exemptions from GST will probably uh, uh, go away as well. So food we and see, education, for that's example. That's right, that's mm. right. Um, I mean, there are various ways of doing that. You could just simply remove the exemptions altogether. Mm -hmm. Or you could do it the way they do it in the UK, and you could have two rates of, uh, of GST. You, could, you have the full rate for, for most things, and then the slightly lower rate for you know, food and so on. That's another way that they could go. And given that the, the government wants to make uh, states more self-sufficient in terms of their revenue base, you know, I, th I think we can definitely see that there's going to be some pressure there. The um, problem is, of course, that the people who tend to be most adversely affected by GST are the ones who are at the lower income uh, threshold. Yeah. Um, and they're the people who've already been whacked quite hard this year uh, in the 2014 budget, so they might be getting another um, dose of the big stick uh, next year, which which is not going to be you know a good political look for the for the government. Do you think that the Federation White Paper might deal with uh, the supposedly inefficient uh, state taxes? So, for example, land tax, uh, stamp duty is a big one. Uh, other excises, uh... it probably well, it should those inefficient state taxes have been in the firing line for a long time. The last time there was a big tax review back in, uh, you know, what, 2007, 2008, mm, Henry, Henry Review, review. Yes. They, they came under fire, mm. um, but you know, nothing really happened. Um, the problem is that they are, they, they're, they're difficult, those taxes. The states themselves are, are quite embedded to them. They, they, you know, it's a very useful source of revenue to them. They are administratively very complex. In the great scheme of things, they don't raise a huge amount of, uh, of money. But very difficult to to to, to remove them without from a, from a legal them. or political perspective. Well, from from an administrative and a uh, and a legal perspective, and just from the, the the perspective of replacing the revenue, which is it, and really you can only get rid of those if you replace them with something else, mm. and the something else really has to be uh, GST. GST. Yeah. So. Uh, unless they're prepared to grapple with the GST question, they're probably not going to be able to look at those other taxes either. Mark, thank you very much for coming to The Forge this week. We're going to put a link below into an information sheet so people can read more about what was been said today. Uh, they can find out more by going onto your website. That's right, www.taxpayer.com.au. And of course, there's always the podcast, which is for free. Yes, every week, free on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, go to our website, or also you can download it from uh, iTunes and SoundCloud. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Cheers.